All right, it's day number two at the Wildlife Way Station. All the CACs came into town and we are making incredible progress. We had to split everybody up into different groups. If you remember what I talked about yesterday, we have the pond area where the pump is gonna be, which is right in front of me. Then we have our wetland filter all the way at the top of the hill. That's part of the recirculation process. We've already come in, we had to cut the skimmer opening wider. So what a skimmer is, is basically, you see the water level is gonna be right about here. So what this is doing is it's allowing a specific volume of water to flow into this catch basin and any floating debris that's inside of the pond is going to get swept into here because when the pumps are on it's constantly evacuating the water out of the system so as soon as these pumps go on this gets drawn down and water from the pond once it's full is going to want to refill it so the two new pumps that we installed would overtax the system so we had to open this up and we had to make it deeper so both of those things are gonna make this a more efficient system. So the other thing that we have to do is we wanna to try to configure at some point, some sort of a net system that's gonna go in here. That net is gonna allow us to remove any of the debris. So if you look around, we got tree debris, we got, uh, there are obviously no animals in here today, but we have leaf debris, we have uh, feathers, we have all types of stuff, we have excess food and things like that. We don't want that stuff to sink, get saturated, fall to the bottom of the pond. We wanted to get swept into here where we could remove it. Let's take a walk up to the top so we can see the progress on the wetland filter. And then from there, it's gonna overflow into that alligator pond and make its way back. All right, I'm standing in the constructed wetland filtration system. This is the workhorse for the entire pond because this is gonna detoxify all the water. So down at the bottom where, where we had our pumps, we're gonna take all that dirty water coming in from the pond, we're discharging it through those two three inch pipes over in the corner. Those two three inch pipes come down into the bottom. We're discharging water into our centipedes. Those are these long modules that run horizontally along the entire bottom of the pond. They connect right to this guy here. This is our snorkel system. So that snorkel is gonna allow us for periodic maintenance. We can come in with a submersible pump. We can discharge all that stuff out and clean those sediments. So from here, once the water comes in, we wanna spread it out nice and evenly. Our flow rate for this system is approximately 125 gallons per hour per aqua block. So down here, we have these aqua blocks. Each one of them is three square feet. They're nine and a half inches tall. They have a capacity of 17 gallons. So we have all that dirty water coming in. The water's gonna spread out nice and evenly along the entire bottom. That's gonna allow the sedimentation process to occur. That's critical because we don't want the gravel bed to get mucked up with all that junk. So we're gonna allow that stuff to settle out because we're slowing the water down to a minute amount. I mean, the flow rate coming through here is next to nothing. So once we get to that point, solids and stuff go in the bottom. That's what we wanna remove on a yearly basis. The cleaner water is gonna come through these aqua blocks. Then we have different layers of gravel. This first layer that I'm standing all around me, this is all a three to five inch uh, layer of river rock. As you can tell, this has really big void spaces. So those big void spaces, we're gonna go from this big open area, and then we're gonna have a bunch of little void spaces or medium like this. The water velocity actually picks up as it starts going through those gravel beds. That's important because we wanna blow out any of the sediments inside of there. So we want sediments on the bottom. We don't want sediments in this. So we're gonna continuously increase the water velocity as we go through the smaller and smaller layers of gravel. So on the very top, we're gonna to have a three quarter inch gravel. That's gonna be the perfect planting bed for all of our aquatic plants. This is gonna be filled up with river rock, about this high approximately. Once that's all full, we're gonna come all the way around the perimeter with some beautiful sequoia stone. So this is a nice angular rock. Uh, we're gonna do all that stone work around the perimeter. We're gonna probably add in a few logs and things like that just to naturalize things. Then we're gonna put in some aquatic plants in here. Those aquatic plants are gonna grow incredibly. And the reason they're gonna do that is we're force feeding them nutrients from the bottom right to the root zone where it's critical. So those plants, the root system spread down into the gravel, they start sucking up all of that nitrogen and phosphates that's generated down in our pond system. So what we're trying to do here, really, really simple. I mean, this is the same for a big pond or a small pond. It's all about controlling the nutrients. Nutrients are food. Something wants to grow inside of this pond and it's usually planktonic algae, it's usually filamentous algae. It's things that we really don't wanna have. So we wanna grow the higher plants. We want flowering plants. 
We want plants that could be utilized in and around the facility for feeding other animals and for different activities here on the property. So we want to have good plants grow. We want to suck up all those nutrients, keep it away from the bad algae. And then from here, the water is going to overflow right through this corner. We're going to have a, uh, a small stream bed. So the water level is going to kind of breach right over here. And then it's going to make its way right through the joint of that wall. So one of the challenges that we have on this particular project is we have lots of different things happening. We have our uh, main filter, we have our alligator enclosure on this side. We need to get water inside of here. So what the guys are doing right now is cutting this block out of here so we could have that stream of water going through. Now one of the challenges we have with alligators is they're going to dig, they're going to burrow. So we have to protect our rubber liner. So once we go through this wall, we're going to have some metal bars coming down so the alligators can't escape. And then we have to barricade uh, and make that barrier around our rubber liner so that water could go right back into that alligator enclosure. And then from there, it's going to continue the loop. It's going to go all the way back down and it's going to go back to the pumps, start the cycle all over again.